want to share. I want okay. I want to share with you the uh, his understanding of the structure of the Haggadah. So let's let's take a look at the Haggadah. Um, I'm going to go share with you my document. Okay. Here is. All right, here is Rav Yossi Sri Mimon's um, whole approach to understanding Magi. Ma, the, the Haggadah has, if you look at the beginning, it has 15 stages. Yeah, Kadesh Rochatz, Karpas, Yachatz, Magi. Magi is the fifth section. Magi is the fifth section. We're going to talk about all the sections in the second part of the lecture. But this part is basically about Magi. The fifth part is that when you tell the story, there's a mitzvah to tell the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim, of our exodus from Egypt during Passover. And there's a mitzvah to talk about it every day. It says that we read in the Krat Shema every day. At the end of the Shema, we say, um, we mention how God took us out of Egypt. There's a mitzvah to mention it every day. So what's unique about this, this night? We have a mitzvah to say it every day. There's a certain verse that says, you should tell your children. Rav, um, Rav Soloveitch, there are many answers to this. Rav Soloveitchik says the main, main difference is that every day we remember it. On, on Pesach, the purpose of remembering it is that we can come to praise Hashem. To thank Hashem. That's the whole purpose. The special mitzvah of Passover is to, to tell the whole story to the point that we'll thank Hashem and be aroused to praise God. So this is how Rav Yosef Siron explains the whole Magid section. He breaks it into three general categories, three, uh, three, general, three overall categories. And basically says like this. And it works for every, like all the verses of Magid. So if you're here in person, for instance, Magid begins on page... Um, and, and like we're using this Haggadah, if anybody has this one. All right. Just bring it back any, me any memories for anybody? No child? Yes. Oh, okay. So the Maxwell House one's also like a prophet, right? We never, we didn't have those uh, growing up. We weren't as lucky. Just joking. All right. So um, Magi begins on page eight and extends all the way to page, uh, all the way to page 26. So it's a long section. So Rav Yosef Spiriman basically says there are three ways to talk about uh, leaving Egypt, this whole Magid section, which means to tell. It's a mitzvah to tell, to use your mouth on Passover. There are three ways to do it because people learn differently. People learn differently. Some people learn through stories. Many people do, especially nowadays. Whenever like I'm giving a Dvar Torah and, I, and I'll be telling something like kind of like in a scholarly way and then I'll bring in a story all of a sudden I see people like starting to pay attention stories go really far and so we want to tell the story the whole narrative of Egypt in a story format however there are those who when the rabbi is just telling stories like oftentimes in yeshiva the people are like rabbi come on uh, rah -rah, give me something give me something with me they want some text they want you to prove it to them so there's another way to tell the story that's the second part through learning and some people learn better through visualization through props. And so these are really the three ways you should tell the story. And this is how the whole Magid section is organized. So I want to show that to you in a color-coded way. This is basically the, 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 the chart that he made, and I want to show this to you inside. Now this is a debate, okay? So this debate, let's see if anybody else joins. Okay, so there's debate in the Talmud when it comes to how do we how do we tell the story? It's very important. Rav said, here's Rav. Rav said that one should begin by saying, at first our forefathers were idol worshippers. Shmuel, his counterpart, who he always disagrees with, says we should begin with this. Everyone agrees you should begin the Seder Pesach with disgrace and with shame and then end up with... Um, with, with praise. That's like, it says in the Mishnah, in the earlier text. Rav and Shmuel disagree as to what is that shame that we mentioned in the beginning. One approach is Rav. Rav says, our forefathers were idol worshippers. That's what you begin with. And uh, Shmuel said, avadim hayinu. Does that sound familiar? Avadim hayinu. Does that sound familiar? So in the end, we, we use both of them. We, we describe the event through both perspectives. And what Rabbi Yosef Siron wants to point out is that at a, a certain time in history, there were different Haggadahs that had, had one Haggadah had Rav's approach and another Haggadah had Shmuel's approach. 
In our Haggadah, we had them both together. And this is really important because both depict the story in a different way. Okay, the first approach, this is it's like, a, this will help you understand this whole thing, this whole first part. Rav, when Rav says, at first our forefathers were worshipers, idol worshipers, he's speaking about a spiritual disgrace, a shame that they were serving idols. Rav, Shmuel is saying, we were slaves. That's a physical form of shame and disgrace. And eventually we were liberated. Our physical bodies were liberated. And so this is why Rav Yosef Siron says, he says the first part of the Seder basically is telling a story from uh, Shmuel's perspective, then Rav's perspective. And he amazingly says that each part of the Seder, each one of these parts that we're going to talk about, is, consists of three parts. So you guys, let's go ahead and come clear to you. There's a question, there's an answer, and then that question and answer brings you, brings you to come to praise God. And he shows in the, in the Magid section how that works out. So basically all together, there's, there's three parts, like a story, but there's a physical and a spiritual story. So it's like two, really. It's physical and spiritual story. Right? And then we have telling it from the perspective of learning and then visualization. So what I'm saying to you right now, it's like an introduction, but it's all going to become clear to you when you see this color coding that I worked on for like two hours today. All right. Because he has one in Hebrew, but uh, maybe it's less helpful for us here. So, for some, it's helpful. For some, it's not. So I color coded this. And now you can have this forever. I'll send this to you. Okay. So we're now in Shmuel's approach. Shmuel, Shmuel's Haggadah, some... Some communities only had Shmuel's approach, which means Abadim we were, we were slaves. That's the disgrace you begin with. And so it's all about phys the, physical, uh, the physical side of things, the story from a physical perspective. So this is, what, this is how it starts. It always starts with the question, all these sections. The question's going to be in, in, in orange. The answer's going to be in yellow. And then the praise will be in blue. So take a look. I'll just give you a bird's eye view of this. What happened? All right. Um, orange, yellow, blue. Orange, yellow. The purple was just another That's thing. Raven purple. Well, I, yeah, I put purple. Yeah, I only use purple for another reason. I'm gonna explain that to you in a moment. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we have again. This goes. It's a long one, right? Then we have blue. blue. Yeah, you missed that. Huh? Blue. Good blue. Then we have R. We have, then we have orange and yellow intermixed. Then we have blue again. And that's the whole magi. So it's basically orange, which is a question for each section. Yellow, which is an answer. And blue, which is the praise. Okay. Now, why did I choose those colors? No reason. The only one, it's because it looked, I could see it better. The other ones are like very dark. The red, like made it hard to look, see. So, all right. There's no, no deep reason behind that. Okay. So I want to show you. So the first, this is how he organizes the book. Spiritual, physical story, spiritual story, then, um, then learning Torah, and then um, the final one, which is visualization. So here it is. We begin. The first question is about physical things, because this is the physical way, to, this, is, this is the way to, to, to narrate, to hand over, hand over the story, give over the story about our physical redemption. So the first question is, Ma nishtana ha why is this night different? What's it talking about? It's talking about what we do in the physical world. It says, on other nights we eat chametz, this night we eat matzah, on other nights we eat, can you see this here? Is it hard to see or is it? Here's what I'm saying. Take a look. Is that better? Yeah. So we have chametz and matzah. We have vegetables. It's about food. It's the question. Why is this night different? We ask a physical question because this is Shmuel's approach. Some of us only had Shmuel. What's the answer? The answer is Shmuel's answer. The answer is Avadim Ayinu because we were slaves. We are we, our physical bodies were suffered in Egypt. That's what he says here. We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. This is the answer. This is the yellow part. All right? And then he goes on to tell, and therefore we have to tell the story. And this brings in our Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Eliezer, and Azariah. And then this brings us this whole idea that we're telling the story because we were slaves. We're talking about it a lot. This brings us to come to praise God. Rav Solovich, remember, Rav Solovich said the whole purpose of telling a story this day in comparison to every other day is it's supposed to bring us to praise God. So each section ends with a praise, a form of praise. Here's the praise. Blessed be Baruch HaMakom Baruch Baruch Blessed. Blessed is God. 
The place, physicality, the place. Blarach HaMakom. HaMakom means place. Blessed be, blessed be the Torah, blessed be He. So that's the first part. That's the first story. Now, what do we need when we begin the second part? What do we need in that second part um, for it to be like the first part? What is, should it start with? Watch a question. Okay, let's see if that's indeed true. You know it is. I show you. Before. Here's the question. What are the questions? The questions are the questions of the four sons or children. The four children. These questions are already something spiritual. We are in the spiritual narr narrative. Why? They're asking why did this happen? Why is it? it's it's not talking about our, what's physically what physically we're doing, but about like philosophy. Why did God do this? And so we have four different types of questions, analyses of of uh, when it comes to the story. That's the questions. The four children. This was Rav's Haggadah. Rav uh, had these questions, and then Rav had the answer, which was a spiritual answer. What's the answer? In the beginning, our ancestors are idol worshippers. Why? That's not about being slaves. That's about something spiritual. So it's a spirit. Some some people connect to the, the whole idea behind this is you have to speak to your children at the Seder where they are. Some people connect with a spiritual story. Some people connect their physical story. So we answer this because we are idol worshippers. Okay. Then we have a little bit of history here, and then this brings us to um, the praise. What's the praise? The praise is this introduction. Blessed be the one who keeps the promise to Israel. It's about the promise. This brings us to the main praise of the section, which is this part. Oh, actually, this part. It should be one second. This is not, not Daini should be there, too. Where is Daini? Oh, it's here. Daini is here. Okay. This is the spiritual praise here about God's promise to, to protect us. So that's the, this is the, this is the first part. I forget how he explains how this is more spiritual than the other one, but he has a way of going about explaining it. Um, maybe it's about God's promise to protect us. Um, I don't know. I have to think about that a little bit more. How that that's spiritual praise. All right. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna move on to the to the, next, to the third part of the of the of the Haggadah. This this third, which is maybe like the second, the first part is spiritual and physical. That's two. This is like the this is the second section, which is learning Torah. I'm just going to do this as the third. This is the second. This is the second. So I'm going to get confused. This is the first. Okay. We're in the third part. Now, this is, this is really great. So this part brings verses. I, this is like uh, raven purple, also for no specific reason. It just, I like the color. Purple is the color I like. But okay, so... This part is all about verses. Ever get to that part where you're like reading verses and it says there's a debate, 100, 200, 250, 300, uh, it was like 150, 200, 250 plagues on the sea. The 10 makos, the 10 plagues, Dan, Sardea, Kini, Marok. There's many verses that are discussed in this part. The, all the verses that are discussed are basically a few verses from Devarim 26. This is the whole part. So some people learn through stories. Other people, maybe yeshiva bookers, academics, or whatever, they need some proofs. So we're going to describe the story, the Exodus, through verses now. These four verses are analyzed, and basically this whole part is about verses. The question is, go out and learn. What did Laban the Arami come to do to our father? That's the question. That's the question. It opens with the question. What did Laban, a long time ago, try to do to our father? Then the answer is all these verses. Look how long it is. If it's basically going through four verses from Dvarim 26, and, it, and it, this, all these verses extend all the way down through here. All the way down. And it, these are all different parts of the verses that they're explaining. But these are basically all four verses. Basically, it's describing the Exodus not as a story, but as, as interwoven in, in our text, in our, in our Torah. This goes all the way down, okay? All the way down to the templates. The ten plagues and these other parts are also ways of explaining it, um, kind of connected to again these ten these verses, these four verses. This is all Pdans, Friday, Akinim, Arab, these are all the ten plagues. And this keeps going all the way through here, because all this is about those four verses from Zvarian 26. This is teaching it in a Torah way. So what is the praise here? The praise here is die die nu, die die nu. Why? Dayinu is a very complicated song. If you think about it, there's so many parts here that people always talk about. If God, it says one of them is, if God, uh, let's see, 
If God had split the sea and not taken us through it on dry land, it would have been enough. Why would that have been enough? You get to the sea, God splits it, but you don't go through. What's, what's so great about that? So people always ask questions about this, this part of the, this, this type of praise, because this is the Torah, this is the one that's all about Torah, learning. This praise is complicated because it's in this section about Torah learning. There's another one. If God brought us to, um, if God brought us to Sinai and didn't give us the Torah, it would have been enough. What's so great? You get to Sinai, you don't get the Torah. What's so great? That makes you think. So this praise is kind of like an, an analytical praise. This is part of the section about Torah learning. Another way to teach your children about the, about the, about the Exodus. So that's the third section. This all goes all the way down to here. The fourth section is visual, visualization. Jesus, the fourth. And this is the part that everybody knows. Rabban Gamliel. Rabban Gamliel. What are the three things that he says? Anybody remember? Don't, don't be. What are the three things that you have to know? You have to say every Seder Pesach. Anybody on Zoom want to offer? What are three? Pesach, Matzah, and Maror. Passover, Matzah, and Maror. You have to mention them. But you don't just mention them. You have to point to them. Visualization. Some people learn through stories, physical spirits. Some people learn through Torah learning. Other people learn through props and visualization. That's why we have this part with, with Rabban Gamliel. He's offering another version. So what's the question? The question is, what is this Pesach sacrifice? We answer. We point to it. What's this matzo that we're eating? A prop. We answer it. Here's the answer. The maror. We point to the maror. What's the answer? You answer it because they made our lives bitter. So that's the question and answer. Okay? And this is the idea. You have to see yourself like you left Egypt. See yourself. Visualization. So this is a, third, a fourth way of explaining the Haggadah. The idea is you have to teach, speak to your children in different ways. What is the praise? This is the praise. Therefore, we're obligated to thank, praise, blah, 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 uh, glorify, exalt, etc. And this leads, it's like kind of complicated word. Um, and this leads you into the hallel. The hallel. That's praise. That's great praise, right? So, and it leads you into the hallel. And that brings you into the second cup of wine. And then we're done with Magi. So, what? That was quick. That was quick. So, when you hear about Magi, it stretches here, we said, over, let's uh, unshare the screen for a second. This Magi stretches over many pages. I'm going to ask you now, let's try to recap what Magi is about. You might have it in your head right now, okay? What, the first, the first part of Magi, what does it talk about? What kind of story? Physical story. What's the, uh, what's the question there? What's a physical question that we ask? Why is this like what? So this is one way to remember the whole logging section. It's amazing. So what is the what is the answer to that? There were, remember, we, were slaves. we were slaves. Okay. And then the praise there was Baruch Hamako. Blessed is the place. The place. Physical place. Well, Second. Actually, so differently than when we say Habakkum Yenachem, then we talk about really it's like God as. Well, there we talk the uh, same thing. God is the place. When we're talking, we're, we're talking to an, an Avel, someone who's in mourning, we say, may God, as a place, it's the same thing. We want God to be as present as possible for them and comfort them. That's why some people say that's why you talk about God as the place in that context. So then we have the second part, which is what? The four sons. Yeah, a spiritual story. What is the question? The four sons, right? We said the four sons, four children. Uh, what was the answer? The answer was? What was the spiritual answer for from Rob? What idol worshippers? For idol worshippers, right? And then the phrase there that God guarded the promise. The third part. What was the third part? The third part was, you remember? Academic learning. Academic learning. Torah learning. That began. What did Levan seek to do to our fam, to our forefather? The answer was all those verses, those four verses, and extended very long. And what was the praise in that section? What was the complicated praise? Remember the song that everybody loves? I am you. I die. Because it's a complicated type of praise for those who are act, kind of academics or analytical. The fourth version, what was it? What's the fourth part of that, Magi? Fourth way of learning? Visualization. What was the question? What were the three questions? Why Pesach? Why Mar? Pesach? Why Mar? You answered that. What was the praise? Hollow. The praise was the hollow. So why is that hollow go with visualization? I have to think about that a little bit. But that's the structure. So now you have the whole Magid in your pocket. 
Anybody ask you, you know how to navigate through it? The main idea is two things. One is that everybody learns differently. You have to find a way to speak to your children in their own way on Passover. Some children learn through stories, through games, through however. You have to be creative to, to keep the children involved and also the older children too, okay? Everybody. Um, Anybody at your table, try to keep them engaged. And also um, the idea that the whole Haggadah's purpose, the mitzvah of Magi, is to bring you to praise Hashem and to thank Hashem. However, that however you can get there. That's a special part about Passover. So that's a little bit. That's like a little Rabbi, bit. I thought it was not only to praise Hashem, but to connect to Hashem as well. So, correct. There are many purposes for why we do Magid, but Rav Yosef Firimon in explaining this, in the very beginning, we said that he said, Rav Soloveitchik said, what's different between this night where we have a mitzvah to tell about Egypt and every night which we have a mitzvah to tell about it? This night it's unique in that it's supposed to bring us to praise Hashem. To thank, it's unique about this night. That's why each section ended with praise. A question and answer, then praise. Because it's, these questions and answers are supposed to bring you to praise God in four different ways. Thank God and praise God.